Welcome to another tutorial where we are learning Brizzy here at Brizzy for Beginners Level 1. And as a reminder, just want to mention to you that thus far you've only been using the free version of Brizzy. In future tutorials from Level 4 onwards, we will be working with the Pro version. And the Pro packs a punch, a lot of extra goodies in there. But I think good exercise, learning the page builder, knowing how the free version works, it will get you 60 to 70% of the way where you want to be, especially if you're working with a very basic website. In the previous tutorial, we had made this Euro image at full height for this yoga site. In this tutorial, we're going to make this section, this block below it, and it's going to consist out of three columns with various elements in it. But before that, let's look at another feature of Brizzy. I'm now on the front end, so to go and edit it, you see up here it gives you the option to edit the page with Brizzy. Click on this and it will open the page builder for us and here you are inside the builder. What I want to do is I want to save this block so that I can use it somewhere else on my page. And I just want to do this exercise with you so that you can begin to understand how you can save blocks and reuse them again later on your site. To save a block is as easy as going to the blocks settings up here in the top right hand corner, click on the icon and then you see the little heart there. Give it some love by clicking on it and it will save it. So where did this block go now? Remember, if you scroll down to the bottom, add a new block, you get this option here to add a blank block. Look up here, saved blocks. And if you click on it, there is the block you had saved. This is a long way coming. If you know from where we started last year to where we are now, the fact that you can see your entire image there, the entire block, a thumbnail of it, really, really something to write home about. So. We are going to use this now by, let's click out of here. And then let's say goodbye to this page. I'm going to say leave, not going to save anything. And then in our dashboard, we can go and add a new page. Pages, add new. And we're going to call this again, level one. And this is 03. And we call this one info boxes. That's what I refer to those little info groups or icon groups or icon blocks or blurbs as info boxes. Publish it, click again, publish twice, and then go over to edit with Brizzy. From here, I bring in that one first say, and then go to save blocks, click on it, and voila, it enters very stylishly. Let's begin then with today's block and we start by adding a new block and I click here and it will give me two columns by default. Now in the previous two tutorials, I used to delete them, but I'm going to use them for this tutorial. In fact, I'm going to make three. So I do that by going up here to the settings icon for the column, click on it. And then I choose, you can either choose this one that will give you add new column or you can duplicate it. The difference between the two is that this one will give you an empty column and this one will copy the, well, duplicate the column with all the contents inside. Currently, we don't have any contents, so the two will do exactly the same. Let's just click on this one that says add new column. The first element that we will bring in is the center element, which is an image. Go to your sidebar, click on add elements, and then look for the image element over here. Click and drag and drop it in the middle as so. Now you click on this element to open up its toolbar. You click here on the left where it says image. And then you see this familiar looking little display with the image that you can click on and you can choose the image. The links for these images are in the description below. So if you want to follow along, just click on those links and you will see where they all come from. Let's say select and it brings in this image. Every page builder basically handles images differently. And once you get used to the Brizzy way of images, you kind of fall in love with it. It's a total different take on how other page builders work with images, but I really like how Brizzy does it. It's my personal preference, and I wish it could be done in other page builders as well. 
Like I said, personal preference. But let me show you a few basic tricks that you have to get used to. Currently, when we loaded that image element, it brought it in at the same dimensions of these columns. Even though up here in the display, you can see my true image is actually in a portrait mode. You see, it's got uh, the, the, the height is taller than the width. It's longer than the width. But I want to have my image display exactly at this resolution as it is in the thumbnail. Now, to do that, we have to set the height at 100%. And this is how it works within Brizzy. So if I click on it and I go to my settings, you will see up here the settings for that. And here is my height in percentage. If I grab this slider and I just drag it, it's going to run over 100%. That's not what I want to do. Let's just move it up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just double click in there and type in 100 and it will give me 100%. It will jump to 100%. And now, if I click again here on the image, this thumbnail and this image here are exact replications of the resolution. And that's all I'm going to do. I want to leave it like that. I'm not going to go ballistic on this one. Now we are going to work in one column over here, bring in those elements. And then after that, we're going to copy this column and then just make changes to it instead of doing everything again and again and again in the right column. To build out this column, I'm going to use three elements. I'm going to use an image, a text for a heading, and another text element for a paragraph. We go to add elements and we first grab our image, drag it in. Then I'm going to drag in a text element and then a second text element. If you know what you want to do and how you want to arrange everything in here, you do what I just did. If you don't know, of course, you'll go back and forth between the elements panel and what you want to drag in. Let's bring in our image and it's this Mandela image over here. Again, in the description, the link. And all I'm going to do is leave it for now. It looks strange that I want to leave it for now, and I'll explain to you at the end why I'm leaving it. Next, let's go to the text element. I click in it, I highlight everything, and I type in flex your mind. Then let's go and style it. We go to topography, choose Playfair display. Going to increase it a little bit to, let's say around 20. This time around for the weight, I'm going to click on the drop down and choose this one bold. For the color, let's add that brown color that we had used previously, 86572A. And now I'm going to center align it by clicking here on the alignment button only once. Next, I'm going to add some text. Well, I'm not going to add some text. I'm just going to use this placeholder text. Just delete that. You know, make it a little bit smaller, let's say width, and any text will suffice for that. I'm going to change the font, click on topography and choose Montserrat. Next, I'm going to reduce the size to around 14 to make it a little bit smaller. And then for the color, I'm going to put it on black. To do that, I just grab this little dot here indicator all the way to the bottom left hand corner until you can see the code is triple zero, triple zero, and that will give you black. Next, I'm going to center align it. I want to add some space on the sides so I can bring it a little bit more focused in the middle. And to do that, whenever you want to add space on the inside, we use padding. And we're going to apply that padding to the column. So go up to the column, click on its settings, and then more settings. And then we can go to the padding. And what I'll do is I will apply the padding uniformly first. So I'm going to link all the sides of this column's padding by clicking on this link. And then I'm just going to drag it in like this until I see my text the way I like it. I think that's okay. Let's see if I push it even further. I'm going to add, let's say a few more up to 110, and I think that looks good. 
So what I've done is I've applied padding now on the inside to this column at the bottom, top and on the sides of 110 pixels. What I will do now is go and play with the image. And this is important why I told you I'm not going to touch the image at the beginning. This image responds responsively to the size of the container, that container there. Because I applied more padding, you would have seen that the image got smaller. Let me just show you if I grab the columns padding and I decrease it, you see the image goes bigger. So the image size is relative to the constraints of the container. Let's put it back at 110, click there and type in 110, oops, 110, good. And that's why I will not mess around with the image until I've actually done all those settings because then I have a better idea of what I can do with the image. The first thing I want to do, click on the image, then go to image. I want to display it at full height so I can see the entire image. I go to the settings and then here in height, I will type in 100, so it's 100%. Now I want to reduce the size of this image and that can be done with this slider up here, size. I'm going to reduce it to around, I don't want it to be too obnoxious, just there in the background. Let's see if I click out of it, it looks the way I want it to look. Good, and that's it, there I have made my info box. An icon, which is my own image, with a little bit of header and a subheader over here. Now, I will do the same for the right, but there's no point in doing it all again. I can just copy this entire column with its contents and then I can just make those changes. So I will do that by clicking up here and then choose duplicate. If you choose add new column, it's going to give you an empty column and we don't want that. I'm going to undo that move. Undo, you can go here to the bottom right hand corner and you will see there's an undo function over here. I like to use the shortcut key. Control on a Windows, Command on a Mac, and Z. Control Z, undo. That is what happens when you add the new column. We want to duplicate this column with all its elements inside. Click here on duplicate and you get that. Yeah, 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 it looks bad. So we fix it by first deleting this column. Click on it and click on the trash can. And now we go to this one, click on it, and you see a little like a north, east, south, west move cursor appears, drag it, see what I'm doing, until you see that thick gray bar, blue gray bar on the right, and drop it, and you've moved it there. Now I can just make content changes to this one. I don't need to make styling changes. Let's click on it, image, choose a new one, and then here in the text, I'm just going to highlight that text and type in, enjoy your, uh, your me. And my placeholder text, I'm going to leave as is. Let's save it at the bottom or control S, command S, and then preview it here by clicking on the preview button. That's our header. And then here below is our info box section. We are going to exit this one and then add some animation for it. And we're going to give the animation to the column. So let's click here on the first column, go to settings, more settings, advanced, and then here entrance animation. Let's go to fade in up, fade in up. Let's reduce the duration to around 1.6. Then let's go to the next one. And we can just say your settings more settings, advanced, and then we choose fade in. I'm just going to choose fade in to make it a little bit different. And we can just give it a little bit longer duration. And then this column, enjoy your me, click on it, go to settings, more settings, advanced. And let's also say fade in up for this one. But let's make the delay a little bit later or earlier. There we go. And the duration also a little bit longer. 
Let's see how that looks now. Update your page and then preview it. First, our hero image comes in with that animation. And as you scroll down, this is the animation that you get for your second block. As always, before we exit this tutorial, we are going to look at mobile first. Go and test it on tablet and mobile. Close this one out. And I go down here to the screen on the left, click on it, and let's view it in tablet. I like it. It's a little bit small, but I think still readable. The only thing is that now, these images are too much to the top and I would like them to come down a little bit to the bottom. What we can do is we can apply padding at the top or we can apply a spacer. But a spacer is an element. If I add the element here, I have to add it on the desktop. So let's go add it at the desktop. I'm going to click here, grab my spacer and drag it in there. And then I'm just going to grab the handle and reduce it like this until it's nicely aligned in the middle. And then I'm going to duplicate it and click inside the spacer and drag it over here until I see that thick gray line and drop it. Let's save it again, just to make sure that we've got that locked in. And now we go into our tablet view. Tablet. And just because of that little space we've added on the desktop, it looks better in the tablet as well. I don't need to have to play around with this one at the moment. Last one to check is our mobile phone. And here we go for the mobile. I think it looks okay. It's bigger, the images, but it displays okay. Nicely done, these info boxes. I like it when things look nice. Well, in this tutorial, then, we've looked at how images work very briefly here in Brizzy. In the next tutorial, we're going to work with the image gallery, and then you're going to see how powerful the drag controls within Brizzy is to allow you to have far more control over your images.